Hey everyone, we have something, well we, I say that like Mouse is here, I have something special, no we because Dusty's here, something Hi. special for you, um, and that is a very special interview with Dusty from Georgian goth pop band Vision Video. Yeah, how's it going? Yeah, um, that how's it going is for you audience, you're special. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, Vision Video. You just released your debut album, um, Inked and Red, on what was it, April 16th? Yeah. So a couple months ago, and correct me if I'm wrong, but are you on your second vinyl press of that already? Uh, yeah, we we just put in an order for it. Um, unfortunately, right now, there's like a really big delay in the vinyl world. The earliest you mm -hmm. can get something is six months out because of all like COVID and some other supply chain issues caused like these these crazy unforeseen circumstances oh yeah uh, so basically was that, uh the 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 vinyl producing mm -hmm. like factory that burned down what yeah yeah, yeah they made the lacquer uh yeah. and, and there's like two companies in like the country that make that and so it, there, and there's like pvc shortages there's cardboard shortages there's just like all these crazy things going on right now but yes uh we have put in an order for a second pressing of like 600 more records and uh yeah it's really um you know it's <laughs> it's one of those things where um you, like when you press vinyl you know well what we did is you know we decided to go the independent route and pay for this like, mm -hmm. out of i dan and i our bass player dan geller and i like basically pulled our savings out and we were like all right here we go and you don't know like <laughs> if you're gonna recoup anything and it's yeah. really scary uh because like I don't know if you know this, but firefighters like don't make a lot of money. So like, I was like, ah, oh, man, well, we just have to do this. And so it's very satisfying um, on, on different levels, uh, you know, and it's not just about money, like at all. I mean, it's just it's just like nice to know that what we're doing is like being received because what we're doing to me is like extremely meaningful. Um, outside mm -hmm. of just the context, the context of like selling records and like getting our band's name out there. Uh, right. But if you're on the second vinyl press, there's obviously something about your music that is resonating people. And you've been putting out music for about a year now. I think your first single was in May of 2020. And mm -hmm. from the outside looking in, uh, it seems like vision video has just kind of exploded. Like you came out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, there's a lot of, there was a lot of work that was done, I think, like in advance of what we were doing. And, um, you know, I mean, the reality was that we just had the time with the pandemic to kind of devote to like social media and just sort of aggressively trying to get the message of the music out there. Um, but, you know, I mean, I think there's there's like different elements to why it kind of moved along as fast as it did. Um, and and you know, I, I think that there is something that, that was intrinsically made with the music that was, it, I, I, you know, we wrote this music specifically to be on a level of accessibility where it didn't just immediately push people away from like goth or post-punk music. Cause mm -hmm. like, I love like, you know, Alien Sex Fiend or The Fall, you know, which are goth and post-punk bands, but they're very like, unpalatable for people who have not necessarily like been introduced to that world um yeah. and and I, so i wanted to write this record in particular to like entice people in because this record is all about you know my experiences with mental health uh and post-traumatic stress and you know the war in afghanistan and my job as a firefighter and just trauma processing and i so i wanted to bring people in so that they could like get to the commiserate level of trauma commiseration i guess and uh and i think that that is the the reason why a lot of people just shared it a lot because they basically i think you know i get messages all the time which is the most satisfying part of this whole process with people just saying like hey i i've been listening to the song like inked in red or or you know, broken fingers or whatever. And um, I just wanted to tell you that, you know, I know what it feels like. And I really appreciate your writing music about that. Um, because like, 
it's not easy to like dig into the memories that I've had to dig into. Um, but you know, it's worth it. And so, yeah, that's, I think there's a lot of different forces at work that, that made it kind of explode out. But then there's also the aspect of just like, we put in a shit ton of work on social media. I mean, oh, yeah. like yeah. I just don't have a life basically. <laughs> like, it, I just it, do TikTok stuff and like Instagram stuff. Like, yeah. every day and it's no, you have so much TikTok stuff like, <laughs> an incomprehensible amount of TikTok stuff yeah it's... and it's incredibly popular your goth dad series is just it's fucking it's, hilarious it's so weird to me though because it's like i see it now but like when you do something that does like really well on TikTok, it's like like the fortunate thing is i don't have any shame like that was removed from my body in the military. Like they just like drilled it out of my head. But okay. like, you know, there's also, there's always that moment when you post something, you're like, I'm, this is kind of lame. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't post this or, you know, there's that like voice and I just don't have that voice anymore. So I just like immediately post whatever I make. Um, but it's like, there's so many things that have just like popped off on TikTok that I never thought like I, when I first started doing like goth dad jokes and then making goth dad like a f literal character, mm -hmm. I was never like, oh, this is going to be a huge hit because <laughs> it's just like, no, it's so dumb. How could you have anticipated <laughs> it would be a huge hit? I, I don't know, but I, I understand it now. And it's, you know, it's like if you read the comments, it's all about it's kind of the same narrative. It's like people who didn't have dad like dads or didn't have healthy father figures or you know, just like, I don't know, I think there's a lot of like extreme issues with masculinity and toxic masculinity in this country. Mm -hmm. And fathers in this country are very often, you know, relying on on cultural nuance that they learned from their fathers, and it just sort of gets passed down, passed down, passed down. Um, and, you know, I look back on that, and it's like, my dad is an amazing beautiful human being and i love him dearly and you know he's he's also been through a lot in his life and i've learned a lot about like fighting to get better because of him um so you know i see i see a lot like a lot of these kids especially like teenagers young adults uh who are like man i wish i had a dad like goth dad and that's like kind of the point of it now is like to provide this like I mean, obviously you're not like literally replacing a, a father figure, but it's like, I think there's something about like the, the, the like cultural uh, subconscious that it sort of installs in people in a way it's like, Hey, this is like a healthy masculine figure, you know, that's like supportive and kind and like caring, but he's also still like unique and like, doesn't give a shit, you know, he's goth dad. Like, I don't know. It's, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm seeing yeah. the parallels between that character and then what you're doing with your music, you know, just definitely. Yeah. Just... It's like, it's a, I've always been a person that really likes duality. I think that that's like the most human thing is to be like, we're not, you know, as I say, I say this and I'm literally in black and white, but we're not black and white human beings. You know, we're like, we are, we are shades of, of various natures and um and i think that 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 that's one of the most interesting things about like the goth subculture to me is like i can express myself through makeup and music and and all these different things but i still you know my job is very much so like a physical crazy chaotic thing that's like very unfortunately still associated with masculinity and like mm. men even though i work with like tons of unbelievable women um oh yeah when when you, you know, think firefighter you think of like sexy pinup male super yeah. muscly like calendars right and it's i mean <laughs> like 90 percent of the dudes that i work with are not attractive <laughs> they're not they're just they're like you know they're like frumpy old guys I mean, but they're, they're, they're good at what they do. It's just not like that's, you know, it's, there's like that perception yeah. of reality and it's just like so false. But anyway, um, yeah, um, I, I think goth dad definitely does mirror a lot of like my personal life and, and, and 
the kind of constant struggle that I have with doing what I do in a very public manner and then like going to work and like being seen as like legitimate and like, cause I'm a very good firefighter. I'm a, and I'm an even better paramedic. Um, and I've had situations where like, I have to like basically put people in their place where I'm like, Hey man, like, I know you like have conceptions of me, but put that aside because we have a job to do, you know? And it's, uh, so yeah, I don't know. Um, but I really love doing goth dad. It's a lot of fun for me. Um, and it, and it makes me really happy that people are like finding value in it, which is like the most, that's the most satisfying aspect of it for mm -hmm. sure. Lame question. Are you a Gemini? No, I'm a Virgo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm a, I'm a cusp Virgo. I'm like September 20th. So. <laughs> awesome. So huh, I, I wouldn't have guessed all the duality. Uh yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um explaining uh what you did though about the accessibility of your music and that that totally explains like the whole calling it goth pop because yeah absolutely absolutely yeah um uh and i i you take serious notes from the cure oh definitely i mean <laughs> we one of my favorite things that came up <laughs> this is so funny uh like i think it was like two months ago <laughs> Some somebody on Instagram left a comment and it was basically like vision video and it was like meant to be like hurtful and like disparaging but it said vision video is the Veta, uh, Greta Van Fleet of the cure and like <laughs> I called Dan and I told him that and he's like hell yeah we are and I was like I know right like I mean <laughs> because it's and it's so funny because it's like any band that there, like especially now where we are with music every band for the past 70 years though has been ripping somebody off like it's just oh, a matter of absolutely pulling in influence you know and i and like we you know i'm not going to sit here and say like oh we like sat there and listened to cure songs one to one and just like pulled notes because we definitely didn't do that mm -hmm. uh you know my my intention was to bring music that i love and like give it our own little slant uh and you know like the biggest the biggest influences to the music that i write uh is the cure and the chameleons um and they are you know in my mind like the two best post-punk bands of all time um for different reasons but uh i think they're both pretty similar and um yeah, I mean, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel, um, but I, I think that the, the the elements that we do bring that are newer are a little bit less apparent. Um, and and the, the, what I mean by that is like, for example, Emily, our keyboard player, Emily Friedock um, and co-vocalist, like she's really into like emo music. So she brings something to the songwriting and her melodies and her harmonizing with the vocals that's not typically associated with like goth rock oh i um, I, I think so absolutely i one of the most played songs uh vision videos that i hear on streams has been comfort in the grave yeah i mean she kills that and absolutely. She's, she's fierce as fuck in it but it's like th that song is quite reminiscent to like 45 grave or like Ex Mal Deutschland to me, um, mm. which are two of my favorite bands from like the goth milieu. But, um, you know, that is her song. And like she, you know, she, she like I worked with her on the lyrics um, to kind of refine them a bit uh, because she writes very like quite literally, which is another thing of like emo music. It's like, I feel this way, you know, mm -hmm. whereas like, what I like and you know, with what fits into I think more of the post-punk goth world is like very nebulous, like esoteric kind of, but I think there's also power to that because it allows people to interpret their own meaning. So I helped her kind of refine a lot of those lyrics, but that song is like very much so her song. Uh, she wrote that about, you know, a relationship that died like in the middle of us writing that record, like very traumatically. Um, and uh you know there, there's aspects of myself in that song too but it's i mean fully hers and she brings something that like i can't do to that um and i think that um 
that's why that's such a special song. It's like so unique. Uh, but again, it's like, it's not like mind blowingly novel or anything. Right. I mean, it's like, you know, it's no, but it, it's it still pays so homage. good. And it's, I just, I, it's also my favorite track. So um, cool. a little biased. Uh, <laughs> I'll let her know. <laughs> she, she, her vocals are just really raw and just really gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. And she, when she, when we do that song live, I mean, it's just fantastic. Like I get chills every time I watch her because she just runs around and like scream. I mean, it gets a little bit more like raw and abrasive. It's a little bit punkier, but it's like Ooh. better in that way. Cause you just feel it. And she's like, she just rocks. I, mean, I just a, just hope a you star. perform that then when you're in Florida, because I would love to see slash hear slash experience that. Yeah, you, we definitely will. We definitely will. For sure. Beautiful. <laughs> oh, now I'm, I'm so excited because I think that that's in October, November, yeah. November, Something, some, yes. some shit like that. It's later. It's future. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. And, and your tour, you're kind of doing like, um, like an East Coast Midwest sort of yeah, it's sure. it's not really the traditional route. <laughs> not no, I'm not complaining. <laughs> you hit Florida, so yeah. Uh, so you know, we got this like crazy opportunity to go play at Tree Fort Festival. Uh, our manager like knows a guy, you know, and that's how that, these things always work. It's like somebody knew somebody, and they heard yeah. about us, and they were like, "Oh hell yeah, this is like super bizarre, and we love it." And we we're like one of the only like goth band. i mean we are like essentially the only goth band playing at tree fort festival which is tree fort i've festival. never heard of tree fort festival so, so it's in boise and it's kind of like it's boise. it's a shit ton of bands it's like okay. 400 bands and most of them are like pretty much indie bands mm. like most of them are unsigned but they're like bands sort of on the same like level or trajectory that we're on like doing really well but they're just like doing it on their own terms. Um, so there's like a lot of like really unique, incredible artists. Um, but we're definitely like the, 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 <laughs> like the weirdos and, but that's great. Um, so anyway, we got that opportunity and that's, you know, in, in Boise, which is like clear across the country. Uh, so we said, screw it. Let's just base a, our first tour around going out there instead of just flying there and back. Cause that seemed a little like, just, I mean, it, it was like, that's a wasted opportunity. So basically, yeah, we go up on uh, September 17th, I believe. It's like, we start out, we go to Nashville, or um, so Asheville, and then we go to um, like Chicago and, oh boy, and Indianapolis. Indiana, yeah, and... and then we cut, you know, west, we go to like a few other places, and we end up like Colorado. Mm -hmm. and then Boise sort of like turnaround point and then we come back but then we have like some disjointed dates that are separate because we have to all like go back to work and stuff yeah you have uh, like um like a, a New Orleans show mm -hmm. yeah we're playing with uh one of my favorite new goth rock bands which is Twin Tribes which is those, like you phenomenal. are playing with so many amazing bands yeah it's really crazy uh we're playing with Secret uh, Shame Secret Shame is probably my favorite uh like modern like they're just absolutely incredible. Um, and then we're playing with uh, Jack with Panic Priest up in Chicago. And mm -hmm. then I believe we're playing with him in Kansas City as well. And then we're playing with Twin Tribes and another really good band. I think Wing it's called Tips. Missing. Uh, we're playing Wing, Wing Tips in Florida. Wing, Wing Tips in Florida. Wing Tips. And, <laughs> and then uh, I think we're playing with another band called Missing in, uh, in New Orleans. And... I might be wrong about that, but I, I, I'm pretty sure that they're from New Orleans and they're amazing. Um, so yeah, just like tons of really cool bands. And it was like, this whole tour is like totally crazy because like when venues sort of said, Hey, we're going to be opening. It's just been like this wild West land grab, <laughs> you know, it's just like, get anything you can. Um, yeah. And, and so like, you know, we just sort of booked all around that and, and we're like adding things as we go. Like we've got one show here in Athens in August that we added. And um, so it'll be a kind of like the preliminary start. And then we have another one in October because most people don't know this about Athens, but we have actually one of the, the country's largest Halloween events. Um, it's kind of compared to like Mardi Gras now. It's called the Ooh. Wild Rumpus. And Ooh. it is a 
huge, huge per street parade where anybody can join. You can just you just walk into the parade and it, it's, it goes for about a mile and a half around the city center. And um, there's like a enormous open air dance party at the end. And then like literally every bar and every venue has like some big event after the street party. That and sounds it's amazing. Wild. So yeah, we're going to play that. And then we're doing like goth night at like one of my favorite venues that night uh so yeah like there's just a lot of disjointed like random dates uh for us but we're just we're just doing whatever we can right now and then uh we've gotten like a couple offers to play europe next year um so Ooh. we're like really excited about that uh and if one of them works out that it, it's like europe but there's also some stuff going on where we would play maybe around cruel world not at cruel world but like after party kind of stuff okay so um, kind of hitting like the european fest circuit so european like stuff and then we'd be coming to like la um and the, you know it's but we you know like our biggest thing is we're waiting for a booking agent because like, we've been just doing all the stuff ourselves and it's like you got I me mean, just have to have somebody who that's their job basically mm -hmm. to do that because it is a like full-time job in and of itself and yeah. our and manager has been doing booking agent stuff for us so anyway. i can't imagine does does full honesty does it feel real what you're doing no it's not, not even remotely <laughs> like i don't i guess there's always been this part of my brain that has said like this you're doing something unique uh, insofar as, you know, your story and, and, and like the message of the music, um, is, is sort of, it's very special. And I always felt that it was in that regard, but you just never know, like how things are going to be received by people. And, um, and I'm not like, I, I guess there's part of me that was not very good, especially in the beginning at like self promotion because I just didn't, I don't know. I think it's really hard for any artist to just be like, you should listen to my stuff because yes. X, Y, Z. You know, it's just, it's tough because we want art to speak for itself. Um, art doesn't speak for itself. Art it doesn't. You, you gotta have, speak for it. You really, really do. And that's the biggest lesson that I've learned. But yeah, I mean, despite all the work and, and the like X factor that we do have, it's, it's really not, I don't know. Yeah. Like, almost every day I wake up and I'm like, this is real. <laughs> like, this is crazy. Um, and there's a long road ahead before, like, I can quit my job, you know? I mean, it's like nowhere near financially viable. Like, we're not making, like, crazy money. And that's not even the goal. Like, I just want to pay my bills, basically. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I can see yeah. it at this point. And that's the crazy thing to me is just, like, how rare it is for opportunities like this to present themselves. And I'm just like, I'm humbled and I'm grateful because like, it's all reliant on the people that listen to our music, you know, like, and, and, and I am beholden to them completely. And I'm like, so grateful for every single person that's like listened to and shared our music or, or whatever that they've done to support us, like buying merch, you know, all that stuff, it makes a huge difference. And every single transaction or, or stream or whatever it's you know uh, uh what's the depeche mode song everything counts in large amounts so, yeah you know. and that reminds me i i still need to pick up um one of your lp release posters oh yeah we definitely that still poster have a is so cool yeah that um the uh photographer who did that shoot for us is uh named grant beecher and he is a local legend in athens and he does all these like really spooky sexy like crazy photo shoots a lot of them are like horror themed and it's just really fog and light and no i've i've seen a few the few photos that you've put out from that photo shoot and it's like these are amazing yeah Holy shit. oh yeah it's like one of those things where you look at it and you're like i don't look like that <laughs> that's not me that's like, some other that's some person that yeah in, in, in that uh in that photo shoot though and you wear it a lot in your uh videos and like selfies and shit is that bullet necklace oh yeah yeah my friend laurel made that for me um her name is laurel fulton uh if you 
I don't know her website. I think if you just Google artist, like artist Laurel Fulton, um, she's a metal Smith and, uh, she used to live here in Athens. She's a good friend of mine. And I asked her to like, I basically kind of ordered that from her. Um, and yeah, she built it like, yeah, it very from much scratch. Like a, it looks like a very physical representation of a lot of what you're trying to do. Like you're literally wearing your trauma on your sleeve or around yeah. your neck. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's a lot of history, uh, my personal history, and and you know just kind of yeah, I mean absolutely, there, it, that thing is heavy as hell, and it um, oh, I bet. yeah, it's definitely uh, not a comfortable piece to wear, but it it's uh, I wanted to have something that really yeah, like just totally represented well, um, a big part of my life. Trauma is not exactly a comfortable thing to wear, right? That's for, that's for damn sure. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I should ask some real interview questions now that we're <laughs> wrapping up. So the first one, I guess I'll ask is a uh, vision video. When you Google that, it's like a Christian DVD -like <laughs> thing. What the hell? Like, where did vision video come from? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we, we had no idea about that, but, um, so vision video, the name is, uh, it's actually based off of the local chain of video rental stores that was here in Athens that was very, very, very much so loved by the locals here for many years. They started in like the mid eighties and they went for quite a long time, like into the streaming age. Um, like they lasted, I think they closed like four or five years ago. It was not long oh, ago. Oh, they lasted a long time. As they a lasted video a rental really store. long time. Yeah. And it was, but it was great. Like they had uh, just the best employees that were like super movie nerds. And they had this like huge wall. It was like employee picks and they were full of like cult movies and just weird stuff. And like, if you ever, you know, if you ever wanted to watch something and they didn't have it, they would order it for you like that. And it, there was just this like cool sense of community. Every time you walked in there, like every single time I'll never forget. There's this like one, the one on the East side of Athens, there was this like super cute girl that I used to just like fawn over and she was like a horror nerd and um you know i just go in there and like talk to her and talk to the other the guys that work there and and just you know you, there's something that's like missing about the intentionality of like you know going into a movie store and like picking out some movies because even if you're going to pick out like three or four sections like once you've taken them from the video rental store that's it you're like that's what you've got and now you can like go and select something. And if it sucks, you can like turn it off and you can go to something else. But there was some like, you know, you, your conduit of quality was, were, were those people, uh, you know, it was, it was that employee who was like, Oh man, like you watched this last week, you got to watch this next. Uh, and I, I miss that. Uh, and I think we all kind of really miss that. Um, and when we were before Emily joined, we were a three piece. So it was just Jason, Dan and I, and, you know, we all kind of like grew up as young adults here and uh, we it just sort of got like jokingly like stated like, hey, maybe we should be called Vision Video. And I was like, shit, that's perfect. Like because we love that. And it and Athens is a special, unique place. Uh, you know, the music scene, the town, it's it's like extremely progressive and liberal. And we're like stuck in the middle of this like staunch conservative ocean of red. And it's I, there just seems something that. It, it just had to be uh, that. And, and, and the, there was also the other aspect of just the name is to me, I love alliteration and vision video just sounded pleasing to me. So uh, yeah, that's kind of where it came from. <laughs> yeah. Cause it's not just like alliteration with a single sound. Like it's, it's also the first syllable and that is really nice. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and um, I, I guess the last real interview question I would like to ask is, what's your favorite snack? Oh, real interview, very serious. That's a ta no. That's a really that's a hard hitter. You know, uh, it, I, and and especially in lieu of talking about movies, because I'm a huge. I mean, if you couldn't tell, I've got like a Return of the Living Dead poster, and mm -hmm. it's like a zombie Lucio Fulci no, I, zombie poster over there. And your um, your home uh, just looks like you are a <laughs> horror nerd. Yeah. Oh, like that's all I do in my free time is like write music and like you know music, make TikToks and, and watch yep. <laughs> but um, uh, 
definitely movie theater popcorn no butter no extra nothing just like plain old popcorn from the from the kettle hell yeah i can eat like an aggressive amount of popcorn all right uh, yeah like it's one of those situations too like i saw a meme the other day i like almost cried because i was laughing so hard at it um and it was just like it was a picture it was like the movie beginning and then it just showed like somebody holding an empty bag of popcorn or whatever i it was some oh, manifestation I think we've all been there yeah and i was like that's me like literally every time where i'm just like well i've eaten this entire large popcorn like in 15 minutes and i am disgusting like two pounds um, of popcorn in 15 <laughs> yeah uh, so yeah definitely i'd say movie theater popcorns wow wouldn't have expected that that's amazing that's a that is that is a good snack <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right so everyone watching i hope you know dusty a little better now i hope so if there's one <laughs> thing that you would want to say to everybody who has made it to the end of this, because it's about 15 minutes longer than I had hoped. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. What do you want to say to them? Uh, you know, I, um, so I guess two short things. One, thank you for, you know, checking us out and sharing the stuff. Again, you know, success is predicated on, with art, it's predicated on people, you know, conveying that art to other people. Uh, so, you know, again, I'm, I'm totally like humbled and, and blown away at like how far we've gotten with this stuff. And, and I hope it continues to grow and it does through, through you. Um, but, uh, secondly, um, you know, the, the whole point of this for me, uh, was commiserating with people and, and just reminding people that it's like totally okay to not be okay, but you have to work to get over that and get through it. Cause you don't, you know, that I, I, I had an interview with somebody once where I, I basically said, you know, you don't get over trauma, you get through it because you have to keep moving through it. You, have, you know, it never goes away. It never ends, but you learn to live with it. Um, and and I think that that's like the most important aspect of what I'm trying to espouse with this music. Um, so, you know, if you ever you know, need to talk to somebody, you gotta, you just gotta find somebody, uh, but you have to talk and you have to communicate and, uh, remember that, um, it's, it's okay to recognize those things within yourself, uh, because I've been there and, um, and we can all come like, at least find that common ground together. And I think that's like the most beautiful part of art is to commiserate. So, yeah. All right. Well, you heard it, folks. Go commiserate. Go check out Vision Video's album, Inked in Red. The links will all be down below. And um, thank you, Dusty, for for your time. This has been an absolutely lovely conversation. Yeah, thanks so much. appreciate you having me. really okay. do. Bye. Bye! <laughs>